Merck and company, along with its partner Ridgeback Biotherapeutics LP, have sought emergency use authorization in the U.S. for, let's see if I can say it right, guys, Malnupiravir. I think that's it. Ryan was teaching us last week that it's it's like my new Paul Revere, <laughs> but it's <laughs> Malnupiravir, which is an antiviral drug treatment for COVID-19. An application was submitted with the Food and Drug Administration for the pill to treat mild to moderate COVID-19 in adults at risk of developing a severe illness that may require hospitalization. The company said in a statement, a decision is expected within weeks. Results from the phase three trial has shown the treatment reduces hospitalizations by about 50%, and if approved, the drug would be the first oral antiviral medicine for COVID. Despite having promising potential, there are some aspects of the treatment that might give people pause. For example, mutagenic drugs can cause either birth defects or cancer in theory. The inclusion criteria for the phase three study of, and I'm not gonna say it because I haven't gotten there yet. I missed the episode <laughs> where Ryan helped us through it. Uh, it requires men to refrain from donating sperm and either agree to abstain from sex or use contraception. Women were required to not be pregnant or breastfeeding, and those who were of childbearing age had to agree to use a highly effective contraceptive method or be abstinent for 28 days from the start of the study intervention. In addition, women of childbearing age must have had a negative, highly sensitive pregnancy test within 24 hours before receiving the first dose of the medicine. So all that, you right. know, all that aside, uh, this is very promising. Now, I, I think the question is going to be if you're, can you get people who were unwilling to take the vaccine, would they then also be unwilling to take this? Will they also see this yeah. as a, as a kind of scary uh, medical intervention? What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's probably going to be a real similar hesitancy. You know, I think a lot of people are just really worried um, about the unknown long-term side effects of the vaccine. And they're going to also be feeling that same way about this brand new drug that really hasn't been tested. We don't know the long-term side effects. And of course, as you just rattled off all of the known, you know, potential risks for people that take these drugs that, you know, according to reports, this um, malnupiravir, <laughs> malnupiravir, um, it, it kind of messes with the genetic code of the virus. And so that's why there are these sort of disclaimers of, hey, this could potentially cause, you know, X, Y, Z things. But one thing to keep in mind is that people who are at high risk of hospitalization and severe COVID are usually way past childbearing age, right? They're over right. the age of 60, 65 years old. So not really necessarily um, something for people in that age group to worry well, it could about. Be obese, but, I mean, obesity, uh, people could fall into right. that category and still be in childbearing age. And also, I think there are the two differences with this. One, it's a pill, not a shot. And that matters to some people. I, I mean, I, I think, I wonder to what extent we're, just, we're missing that people don't want, some people who don't want to get vaccinated, it's, a, it's because it's a shot and they don't like shots. This is a pill. And also, if I'm understanding this correctly, so this is an intervention after you already have COVID, right? You yeah, know you have it. Right. This is an intervention to stop you from, from it going in a severe direction. So it could be like the vaccine you have to get, you know, you're getting that, it's prophylactic. That's to, to hopefully stop you from getting COVID. And then if you do get COVID, right. to stop you from getting a severe disease. This is coming at, at the point where, okay, you know you have COVID. Hopefully you're interacting with some kind of doctor person who might be telling you, you know, you are at risk of an, uh, and we're really recommending it for you in this case. So that might be, do you, know, you see how that's, that's kind of different? I think that's yeah, totally different. Course. Yeah, of you know, course. And, and we're going to need more and more of these sorts of treatments, you know, just like we have for the flu. We have the flu shot and then we also have treatments for once you get the flu, because as we're seeing um, more and more people who have been vaccinated are still getting COVID and they're still having severe outcomes. You know, the, it, the, the vaccine is not foolproof. And as the Israelis have pointed out, as the FDA has now pointed out, as the CDC has pointed out, is that there is a wearing off, you know, effect of the vaccine through time. And that is why the Israelis, you know, were sounding the alarm saying, hey, our hospitals are, you know, we're, we're seeing more and more people who are fully vaccinated. And so, of course, there's going to be this need, right? Even if you're fully vaccinated and you end up with COVID, you could still have a severe outcome. So you want to have something. You don't want them to say to you, well, I don't know. You know, hey, man, you got the vaccine. And unfortunately, it didn't really, you know, you still ended up in this situation. I mean, people are going to want treatments. Yeah. Um, and we're going to need that moving forward. And so we're going to need to be testing any and all, you know, and, I, and I've always been in the camp of why are we not testing any and all possible treatments out there? There was There's new reports that have also come out 
um, that people might be more comfortable with is aspirin. So some reports are coming out, a new study came out showing that aspirin for people that are already infected with COVID seems to reduce the rates of people having a severe outcome and ending up on a ventilator. This was for hospitalized patients. And so, um, you know, obviously aspirin has a really long history, great safety profile. People are gonna be feeling a lot more comfortable taking aspirin, not worried about the long-term side effects there. Yeah. You know, so we need to be looking at any and all of these, but I do think that with a drug like this, there's still going to be people that say, I don't know, you know, give me something a little bit, you know, give me the aspirin, uh, which, you know, yeah. hopefully the media doesn't end up demonizing aspirin now and calling it, you know, rest remover. People are taking rest <laughs> horse, remover. Horse dewormer. <laughs> I, well, I, I take aspirin, I, I take aspirin with a drop of a hat. So I, you could, I, I, when I had coronavirus, I took aspirin just because that's my normal I'm sick re regimen. Um, you're going to, you're going to regret saying this when they come out saying that you're taking some dog pain medicine. There we go. And, it, <laughs> right, I, and I'm not saying only take aspirin. I'm saying, you know, you should, I, I'm telling, I think people should get vaccinated. Most people should get vaccinated. And I, and I think this is very promising. And I don't want, you know, the FDA loves to come between, you know, well, you, the FDA doesn't consent, so you don't get to try this promising uh, 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 drug yet now. So I, it, it's good to see them moving forward. I, I think people should be able to try more things. Uh, I mean, that's, well, that's I mean, how science works. Right. And we saw that even with the Trump administration, the right to try legislation yes. or executive order. I, I'm not sure which one it was. But, you know, the, the look, if you are in a bad place and you're in the hospital and you know it's not looking good you should be willing and you know this is something able. my people the libertarians have been uh, uh, pushing for a long time we're, we're very and people should have this option the government should not come you know they, they should you should be aware of the risks or that maybe you know not everything's going to work but it, people who are very sick who want to try they should be able to the government shouldn't prohibit right. that yeah and unfortunately we're seeing sort of the narratives around certain medications and the and even uh, doctors and hospitals kind of rejecting certain things outright because of the narratives. And really, I mean, look, man, like I say, if you're in this situation, you're going to want to try it all, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting. Uh, we'll have more rising right after this. Please stick with us.